Hi, welcome to the Duopoly Report. This is Steve Caviedes. You know, um, I've been doing elections and campaigns for almost 30 years. Uh, one of my first experiences was in uh, 1988 in uh, Southern California, going out door knocking. And even before that, I was doing voter reg for nearly an entire year in California, in Southern California, Riverside, uh, in 1987 for the Democratic Party trying to get more Democrats in what was called Swing District. <clears throat> I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things in elections. And I've seen, um, I've seen a lot of good and bad things. And, you know, these days it takes a lot to move me. I'm, uh, I, I've, uh, I've, I've witnessed and re-witnessed many of the same stories occur just with uh, different names on them over the course of many election cycles. But something happened the other day that moved me greatly. Now, this, this entire year has been difficult, and, e and even the le ending part of last year, watching the duopoly at work. And there is probably no better example of that than what I saw in this tweet from Veterans for Peace. This is back in December 11th. There you have it, three days after the Afghanistan papers were released revealing massive fraud, mismanagement, and lies. Congress votes to pass the NDAA with only 48 in opposition. Nothing says accountability like a $733 billion blank check. It was a blank check. The NDAA was a gift to Trump. He got nearly everything that he wanted in that bill. He got his Space Force. He got more war toys than he uh, even asked for. And, um, and if you look at the breakdown of the vote in the House, this is Pelosi's House. Pelosi, who initiates spending bills. Pelosi's House. 186 Democrats yes to 41 Democrats no for Trump's massive uh, defense bill. Um, and, you know, almost all the Republicans voted for it, too. There were a few who did not, and one independent um, who actually is... Uh, uh, libertarian-leaning Justin Amash, a former Republican, um, voting no. But of those 41 Democrats who've said no to Trump, do you think Pelosi was one of them? The answer is no. She was cheerleading this bill. <clears throat> In fact, there was no member of the New Mexico House delegation who voted no on this bill. Not Ben Ray Lujan, not Deb Holland, not Zolchil Torres-Small. None of them. And in fact, when it first came through in the Senate side, Tom Udall and Martin Heinrich voted yes. Um, so this is the climate we're in. And there are people that are just tired of no, no party that says no to war. <clears throat> we don't have one. There's a single party. And I, I keep seeing tweets all the time about how extreme our politics are and how Democrats and Republicans gridlock and get nothing done. And yet, check this out. They're getting this done just fine. War is, is A-OK -okay with them. So, needless to say, there's a lot of uh, angst about that. And there are people who are trying to do something about that in this presidential election cycle. There's two um, candidates that I know who are openly talking about reducing the amount of war that we conduct in this world. Uh, one is Tulsi Gabbard, and the other is Bernie Sanders. Now, <clears throat> I'm just doing my thing on New Hampshire primary day, and then this tweet comes across, um, which is something I hadn't ever seen in the 30 years of being involved in campaigns and elections. This is... Uh, 10 minutes before the close of the polls on the New Hampshire primary night. I will go to sleep knowing that the Veterans for Bernie did our job. Al Johnson, a VFP, Veterans for Peace national member, died making calls for Bernie Sanders. Thank you, Al. I'll see you on the Fiddler's Green. It still moves me every time I see it. <clears throat> because this is a gentleman who was a veteran. 
or is a veteran, or was now, yes, was. And, and what he was doing in the final moments of his life was trying to help create change in this world, positive change. And change that ultimately he would never come to see. I have a feeling he may have known that. He may have known, not known that the 11th was his final day. <clears throat> but he probably knew that even if he helped his candidate, Bernie Sanders, and got him, helped him get elected, that he might not see the days the change w in which the change would come. But yet, there he is. And to me, this is the example of a veteran serving his country. His weapon, a laptop and a phone. He's in his country, talking to people in his country, and trying to make his country a better place to live. That's defending your country. That is serving your country. This is, this is really that in action. And I can't be prouder of, of, of Al Johnson. I don't know Al Johnson, and I don't need to. But this veteran, this veteran made the ultimate sacrifice defending our country. He didn't defend our country by going 10,000 miles away from here and shooting someone with a missile who intelligence in their ear is telling them that it's not a child, it's a dog fire. This is how he was serving our country. And I cannot be more grateful. And it really gives next to no excuse to any of us who want to change our country for the better. So, Al Johnson, I commend you, I honor you. And I hope that more people will get involved at all levels, phone calling, door knocking, giving your 10 bucks a month to Bernie Sanders to try to bring some change about. Because um, I'm younger than, than Al is, <clears throat> but I've been at this now for 30 years, and I've been looking for a lot of change, and very little of it has happened. Very little. There's some, but not really a lot and in many ways things have gotten worse and I don't want to die not seeing the change so um, that's pretty much it get involved um, get active uh, work for Bernie Sanders for president it's it's clear amongst a huge subset of people that this is really our only option to bring something better into this country that we haven't had yet. Honor Al Johnson. Thank you very much. This has been the Duopoly Report. I'll see you again in another video soon.